Welcome back. Now, $4 trillion in new government spending is being debated in Washington right now. Let's go back to Capitol Hill, where our own Jessica Smith is standing by. Jess? Yeah, Shauna, I am here with Congressman Peter DeFazio. He is the chair of the House Infrastructure, Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for the opportunity. Let's start talking about infrastructure. The House has already passed your plan, the Invest in America Act, that um, water and transportation infrastructure bill. You've been clear you're not a fan of this bipartisan deal. So do you think Senate Democrats tomorrow should vote for it, vote to move ahead in this debate? Well, we're expressing our concerns. We passed a transformative transportation bill that met the goals set by the White House, that is to deal significantly with climate change, create new programs for social equity, for transit deserts, underserved communities, rejoining communities split asunder by freeways, uh, major titles uh, on safety, uh, and uh, you know, significant uh, increase in investment in transit, significant increase in rail, and uh, most of those things are lacking in the Senate proposal. In fact, they have no transit at this point in time. Uh, their rail title is way smaller uh, than ours. It's not going to move us toward high and higher speed rail. Uh, and then the policies they have uh, do not deal meaningfully uh, with climate change, fossil fuel pollution. Uh, their social equity programs are one sixth ours. They don't have. They lack the policies. So. Uh, we're very concerned about the lack of involvement and discussion with us and between us and the Senate. So Politico quoted you saying the whole thing falling apart is probably the best thing. So to be clear, do you want this bipartisan plan to fail at this point? One of two things. Um, they can pass it as a standalone bill and we go to conference uh, and make it better and work out our differences, mm -hmm. or it fails. If this is a take it or leave it on the House side, I'm going to leave it. So what specifically do you want to see? What changes do you want to see in order to make this passable in the House? We, look, we've been living off the Eisenhower era for you know, 70 years. It's the 21st century. Uh, we have built 30,000 lane miles of highways in our 100 largest cities in the last 25 years. Guess what? They're more congested than ever. It's called induced demand. You build it, there's more traffic. Uh, we have to look at transit alternatives, commuter rail alternatives. Uh, we've got to make it safe for people to cycle and use uh, you know, pedestrians and cycling. There's a 50% increase in fatalities in the last 10 years in cycling and pedestrians because it's not safe. My bill deals with all those things. Their bill doesn't. I, those things have to be in a 21st century bill. I'm not going to do Eisenhower 8.0 and repeat the mistakes of the last century. Let's talk about climate a bit, because that is a key priority for you, for many Democrats in, in the House and the Senate. What provisions do you want to see on climate specifically? We have something called Fix It First. Uh, there are states, Texas and states like that, it's like their solution is more big highways, rip down, go through more neighborhoods, you know, just make it wider and bigger. Uh, Virginia just rejected that approach and they figured out a, a different approach with commuter rail. I want states before they engage in massive expansion of highways to look at alternatives that might better serve the people in that state, that city, or that region, uh, which won't be fossil fuel polluting single occupancy vehicles jamming up the road. You know, we've heard from Republicans and even some moderate Democrats like Senator Joe Manchin saying that they're concerned about some of the climate measures that are in the reconciliation plan. So how do you balance the concerns of progressives who say climate has to be in this bill and moderates who are concerned about it? Well, in reconciliation, uh, they're dealing with uh, fossil fuel pollution from transportation is the biggest polluter in the country. Second largest is energy. And in reconciliation, they're going to deal with renewable power and grid reinforcement so we can wheel that so people aren't charging their electric vehicles uh, off of a coal plant. You don't get much of a gain there. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a different title in their bill, and that's absolutely necessary to move toward more renewable energy uh, to, you know, to charge the vehicles that are coming. And we're going electric. The world's going electric. GM's going all electric. Federal Express is going all electric, run by a very conservative Republican, including semis. Uh, there are already four companies producing electric semis. Uh, there's no place to charge them. Uh, we have to build the backbone, and then we have to supply the power to charge those vehicles. You know, a big sticking point in all of this has been how do you pay for it? And it sounds like, at least on the Senate side, the IRS enforcement, the ramped up enforcement, is, have been dropped from the bill. I know you have a bill to narrow the tax gap. 
What do you think about them dropping this measure and how do you want to move forward and make sure people pay what they owe? Well, they're ripping off average Americans. They say an average family is paying 3,000 bucks more a year in taxes because of tax avoidance by millionaires and billionaires. It's estimated, there's credible estimates that say it's $600 billion a year in avoidance. IRS's uh, staffing is 20% what it was below you know, 10 years ago. Uh, they've had a massive turnover because the people aren't well paid, they're being abused. Uh, we need you know, professionals there. We need to close these tax loopholes. We need to make those people pay under existing law what they're supposed to pay. And apparently the Republicans don't think it's fair to make them pay what they actually owe. That's, that's, uh, you know, that's nasty. You know, we have heard a lot, we just heard it from Congressman Kevin Brady, concerns about inflation, especially as you consider trillions of dollars in new spending. What do you say to, to those concerns? Well, I just read today that 40% of the increase last month was used car prices, which by the way have plateaued and starting to go down. Uh, and then before that, a big factor was lumber prices and housing. Lumber's down 60% in the last two months. Uh, what we saw was huge bottlenecks coming out of COVID after the pandemic, and there's still bottlenecks out there. We're working our way through those things. I don't believe this is going to be a sustained threat. The Federal Reserve doesn't believe it's a sustained threat. Treasury doesn't believe it's a sustained threat. Only the Republicans do. They've been carrying on about inflation forever, but it hasn't happened. Okay, I think we have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Congressman Peter DeFazio, Chair of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. We'll send it back to you in New York.